guys, Kendall here. So I wanted to do a review on my Hikavision DS2CD2032-I. Wow, I know that's a mouthful. But um, basically, this is a PoE camera. It's advertised online anywhere from 1 megapixel to 3 megapixels of video, depending where you go. And um, they run around $100, a little more, a little less, depending where you go. You can get Chinese knockoffs for anywhere from $50 to $80, if you know where to look. Um, I bought mine probably four years ago initially from Costco for $200 and they've maintained a rate around that price. The nice thing with that $200 is you get two cameras, you get I believe two spools of wire for the cameras which are 75 feet each or right around there, they might be 50 feet. And um, they basically come with everything you need to plug and play into your network in order to get these cameras online. The only other piece of equipment that you're going to need is going to be a PoE switch, which basically means it's a power over Ethernet switch. Um, the nice thing with that, with PoE, is you don't have to run any separate power to the cameras. You literally just plug in the network cable and you're good to go. So that's really, really sweet. It uh, really streamlines, you know, your install. And that was the main reason I went with them, other than, you know, the picture quality at the time sounded like it was probably one of the better cameras out there. And uh, the durability, these are rated at IP67 for the rating. Um, and you can research that online. It basically means it's water, it's weatherproof, it's a really good uh, built camera. Now, um, you can find these on Amazon, like I said. And here's an example, and it's about $104 for a single camera. And uh, if you go to Costco, and that's where I got my original ones, they're labeled as Swan cameras, but they are the exact same camera, and you get a two-pack. Okay, which is really sweet. So yeah, you get 60 foot of cable, um, and it's outdoor rated, obviously. I've had these cameras for four years. I haven't had a single problem with them. And, uh, you know, I get temperatures that are negative 20 below on occasion. And if you just think about that for a little bit over the last four years of winters, you know, and I haven't had a problem, I mean, that's pretty impressive, to be totally honest. Okay, so moving along, this is basically the web interface that you're going to get after you've configured your camera for an IP address. So all these features I'm going to show you are in here inside the camera. It doesn't require you to have a NVR or a network video recorder. It's just basically you get your camera online, you set it up on the network, and these are all the features that come with the camera, which are pretty impressive. Um, I know the Nest cameras are out there, and uh, a lot of people like those, but you have to pay a fee for those, which is minimum $10 a month, I know, because I own one of those. And um, you can only save 10 days worth of data, which really, in my opinion, is good for like an alerting system, but it's not great if you want to actually record a bunch of data and keep it and store it for a possible event. Let's say you're gone on vacation for a month. Okay, um, so getting into the camera, let's uh, just start there. You have different aspect ratios once you're in the web interface that you can view here. Uh, I'm using 16.9. I'll blow it up to the original size. And it's pretty big, as you can tell. I have to use my scroll bar in order to see the whole camera. And with that, I'm going to just uh, emphasize on, this is on one of the lower settings that the camera's on as far as resolution, okay? And um, I'm running 1920 by 1080p for my monitor to give you an idea. So um, it does work with Chrome. It doesn't really work really well with... Uh, Microsoft Edge, it actually doesn't work at all. I haven't tried Internet Explorer, the latest version, just because I'm a Chrome user, but it did used to work with Internet Explorer. Okay, um, moving along, you can change it to 4.3 form factor, and as you can tell, it's very quick. Um, and then you can have these different streams set up, which are really not necessary for what we're doing today. Um, you have a playback option, much, much like on any camera, and uh, you use either a UNC path for a network location that you have shared out and you can save these files to a UNC location or you can use um, NFS as a file system so if you have a spare computer or if you have a let's say a NAS device somewhere you can set up NFS and it can copy files to a directory that will automatically save all these files so you, you know it would be nice if you had a separate uh, file store or somewhere to save it, but if you even had a spare laptop or a computer around and you want to just dump all this, it would allow you to do that in the interim, right, until you get a device that you can record all your data to. It'll allow you to at least get your feet wet, which is really, really nice. Okay, 
Um, the logs basically give you all the type of people, um, or sorry, give you all the type of events and uh, remote users, people like that that have been logged into it. Um, this isn't really too helpful, to be totally honest, because you're not in a big organization. You're not having a ton of people log into it. You're not having a bunch of different devices hooked into it. So the log is kind of worthless for what we're doing today. Um, the configuration tab here, this is where everything is done. And there's just so much you can do with these cameras. And that's what I love about these cameras. So um, basic configuration. Uh, system, you can label it what you want it, you can give it a device number, it tells you all the information about the cameras. Uh, the nice thing is the firmware, when Hikavision comes out with newer firmware, you can flash your cameras. Like I said, I've had ones that were labeled as Swan, but I was able to um, flash those using a Hikavision firmware and get them all standardized. So that's really, really nice. Um, gives time settings, you know, you can use time servers or you can sync with your computer, um, time zone. Maintenance is, you know, pretty limited as you can see here. You can reboot the device. That's about the best thing other than the firmware upgrades. Um, and then the network settings, we'll drill down on that. Um, obviously, I'm setting these statically. I'm not using DHCP, so I know my cameras are always going to stay at the same IP address and they won't go offline. Um, you can specify the port. So let's say you want to get to this much like I'm doing here, port 80. So I'm able to get HTTP traffic. Um, same thing with 443. Um, the server port here for 8000 is if you have a separate computer, a separate laptop, um, something like that on your network at home. Um, you can use a thing called NVR, and it's a, basically a network video recorder, and it's free software that you can download from Hikavision, and it allows you to basically save all your information to that computer. Okay, I'll do a totally different video on that if you guys want to know more information about that. I really just want to kind of highlight the camera because there's just so much in these cameras. Um, this is the streaming port, basically. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that. Um, and we'll go to video audio. So you have, like I was saying, you have a video stream, and it's at 920 by 1080p, but you can bump it all the way up to 2048 by 1536. Um, that's pretty crazy. Um, you can change your bit rate, whether you want it variable or consistent. I always set mine to constant. Um, and then I just do 30 because they just generate a lot of traffic. So if you had a bunch of these cameras, because they are high def, and by high def, I mean true high def. Um, these cameras, my Nest is nice, but it's nowhere near the quality of this. Um, so just give you some comparison there. You can choose the video encoding um, that you want. And on this particular firmware, they only allow me to do H.264, which is great. It's a good encoding. Um, on past firmwares, you can choose other options. Um, Profile, you can't change that anymore. Uh, the iframe interval, you really don't want to mess with that. And the rest of the stuff, you know, you can play with if you want to do smoothing. That's just for your video, obviously. And then uh, down here on image, you have uh, your switch from day to night. So basically, it has infrared um, built into the camera. So when you go to night mode, it'll automatically turn on the infrareds it'll basically make it night mode. And you can switch that on the fly. You know, you can say auto switch, I want a scheduled switch, and you can choose certain times during the day. Um, you could actually just force it to, to stay on. There's so many different things. And then obviously you can adjust the, bright, the brightness, the contrast, all this other things that are sitting right here. I really don't want to mess, it on the, mess with it on the camera because it's going to make this video long enough as it is. Um, but you can change the exposure settings. And this is much like a DSLR if you think about it like that. This is the amount of time it's taking to capture the image, basically. And you can play with this as well, you know, and then you can adjust the gain for your image exposure. Um, I like where mine are at, and that's where I'm keeping them. And then here's that day-night switch that I was telling you. You can make it auto, or you can say, hey, right now it's daytime, right now it's nighttime, whatever your instance may be. Or, you know, I want it to auto decide itself and then turn on the infrareds as it um, knows. Um, I don't mess with a smart, smart IR and I wouldn't suggest actually messing with that. Now if we go to the backlight settings, um, research the WDR. Uh, I guess I'll just go with that. Um, some people like it, some people don't. White balance, I just have it set to auto white balance um, right now. Imaging enhancement. I mean as you can tell there's a ton of stuff you can adjust here. Right, video adjustments, mirror, rotate, 
how many um, hertz you want for your camera. I mean, there's just so many different things. Um, capture mode, you can choose what you want to capture uh, for images if you're doing pictures. All right, security. This is uh, the usernames that you have that are allowed access to this web interface to this camera to change things. That's just a basic configuration, all right? That's just crazy. You can go to the advanced configuration, and we'll go to something as simple as system, where you only had the first three tabs. You now get these other three tabs. All right, there's a bunch of things you can do. But the main thing that we're going to want to hit on here on advanced is the storage. Now, the storage is really cool. The storage you can set up uh, motion detection for. You can set up how many seconds pre-movement does it start recording, and how much post-movement does it start re uh, end the recording which is really, really slick, and five seconds works great for me. Um, you can overwrite your data, right? Your storage management, like I was saying, if you had a device, you could add one, and that is done through this NAS here. And let's say I had a device that was on 1.20, and I created a backyard path, just a file share, basically. You could then come under your storage management. It'll give you the free space. It'll tell you everything about that drive. It'll allow you to format it. When it's saying format, don't be freaked out. It's not formatting like Windows format. What that actually means is it's formatting the disk to accept the image files, basically. So it's more of an application formatting to accept the images and not a format like you would think with Windows, I'm going to wipe all my data. It does not wipe all your data. It basically allows it to build the folder structure. That's what the formatting means. It's building a format to put all the structures in place so your images can go there. All right. Um, it tells you how much do you want to have for if you want to set quotas on that disk. 25% of it is going to be pictures, and I want 75% of it to be, um, you know, a video. Um, the NAS, look how many devices you can add. You can add eight different devices if you wanted. I mean, that is just really, really impressive to me. If you had a couple different laptops around your house, you were worried about, well, maybe somebody gets into my house, they take one of my devices. Well, you have another device somewhere else that you can save that data to. So that's really, really helpful. Um, and again, guys, this is all free in the software, which is really, really amazing to me. Um, it's just really cool. And then um, snapshots. This is if you wanted to enable uh, pictures, basically. And you could take those pictures, and you could set all this information up. And you can do, um, basically, you can email them to you. Here, I'll go to the network settings. I know there's just a lot here. Um, but basically, you can set up an email. And let's say you wanted the sender's email address and the receiver's address. You could put all that information in here. It allows you to test it. It'll send a, uh, a test email. And then anytime it detects movement, it'll actually send you those pictures. Um, this feature can be really great, and this feature can be really annoying. If you have your sensitivity set up way too much on the, the camera for the motion detection, you're going to get a lot of pictures. Okay, So that's really, really irritating. Um, but it's a really cool feature, right, nonetheless. Um, uh, if you don't want them emailed, you can use FTP. Hey, I want to, if you have an FTP server somewhere out on the cloud, you can take these pictures and you can upload all your pictures to wherever you want. Again, you can implement that with motion detection. There's so many different things you can do with this camera. Um, you can SNMP into the camera. For you geeks out there, you can enable it. Um, I didn't really see a reason to do that, to be totally honest, unless you wanted to monitor and say, hey, my camera went down. Why did it go down? But if you use the NVR feature within the um, Hikavision, that free download that I was telling you about, you can set up all those types of things as well. There's so much you can do with this platform. And um, gosh, I just I don't want to go through all of it here. I'm already giving you a ton of information on what's happening. But um, as you can tell, there is literally just ridiculous amounts of information that you can view here. Right, dynamic DNS. If you want to have each camera have a specific DNS name, if you have that capability, if your provider gives you multiple external IP addresses, um, there's just just so much you can do. Um, yeah, I, I mean it's 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 really pretty awesome, to say the least. Like I said, I've had these cameras for four years, some of them, and I've had um, others for two years. I haven't had a single problem with them. They're out in the elements year-round, 24-7. They're constantly recording, and um, yeah, I have no issues with it. I'll touch on, here, I'll just, I'll just uh, bring this up for you guys just to see. So here's my NVR that I have set up, and this is that IVMS 4200 PC NVR, since I keep talking about that. So 
And I'll try and just hit on this briefly, but this setting here where I was back at the, um, let me find it here. Like I said, there's so many, oh, it's under storage. How I was saying you can save somewhere, and but if, let's say you don't have a spare, um, like a NAS device that you can save them to, you can take a regular PC and you can load this software and you can view your cameras. So in this view, I just have four cameras um, that I view in this because you know getting like eight or 10 is just kind of ridiculous at times. But here, I'll just click on this one and it just gives you a quick view of what's happening here. The nice thing is, is you don't need to have these up all the time. All this does is it gives you a live view. It's still recording all the information that all these cameras are set up. And I can do a separate video and tutorial on how IVMS 4200 works. It's really slick. You can integrate your phone with it. Um, like I said, there's there's just so many different things you can do with it, and it's free, which is great. So if you have a spare laptop running around on you know at home that you're like, what am I going to do with it? It's kind of older. Well, there you go. You just found a perfect source for it, um, a great way to play with it, and there's just so many different things you can do with it. So um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend these cameras. Um, I've had them, like I said, four years, and they're just amazing. I bought a Nest camera just recently because I wanted it more for the notification standpoint, and it works great for that, but it doesn't really, you know, come anywhere near to what these cameras can do. I mean, these cameras are just great. I would suggest if you're going to have more than four cameras, you definitely need to get a, a gigabit uh, power over Ethernet switch, even though the cameras say they're only 100 meg. Well, that's 100 meg each that they could run at. Um, so just keep that in mind. It can really bottleneck your network. Um, and those gig switches are not much more than a 100 meg uh, PoE switch. So if you're thinking you might buy a couple of these, um, I guess by a couple, I mean more than two, uh, you probably want to invest in a gig switch for that power over Ethernet. Um, hopefully you guys learned something, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Thanks.